Our family just got back from a mega road trip where we drove over 50 hours in three weeks. First, we drove from where we live in Massachusetts down to the DC area where we have some friends and family. That took about seven hours. And then our biggest trip was from the DC area down to Miami, so the tip of South Florida. And that trip took more like 18 hours. And then we did the reverse and drove back home. Quaju and I love traveling, and we also have two daughters. We have a two-year-old, and we have a six, now seven-month-old. But at the time that we were traveling, she was six months old. And we were a little bit concerned, like, how are we going to do this? But we were mostly really, really excited because it was worth it for us. So my first tip would be to pack the car early. Nobody wants to be scrambling the hour before you're supposed to depart to load up the car. So do yourself a favor and the night before or maybe the nap time before you're leaving, make sure you load up the car. You know, it can always take more time than we think it's going to take. Sometimes when you have a small car and a lot of stuff because you're going on this long road trip, it's kind of like a puzzle that you have to figure out where everything goes and how to put it and all that. So Make sure you have enough time to do that and that your departure is stress-free. My second tip is to drive at night. I know this isn't for everyone. I have a friend that I recommended this to. Her and her husband tried it with their baby and she was like, I was falling asleep. I could not do it. I don't know how you guys do it. And I have to be honest, it's mostly my husband who is an expert at driving at night, but it's so worth it if you can pull it off because you're avoiding traffic. The roads are pretty much clear. You're avoiding accidents. You're avoiding road rage. You're just avoiding more busyness on the road. And that is a win because you're going to make it to your destination faster. You're going to make better time. And the second benefit of driving at night is that if your baby's all already used to sleeping during the night, which hopefully they are, then it's more likely that they'll sleep the whole ride. So my baby is used to sleeping 12 hours at night. So we got at least 12 hours of our road trip where she was completely out. And then she woke up for a feeding and then she went to sleep again, which was awesome. And that's not guaranteed, but it is more likely that your baby will sleep if it's dark and they're already used to sleeping at that time anyway. You definitely have to prepare if you're gonna drive at night though. You have to get some good naps, some good rest before you depart and make sure you have time to recover when you arrive at your destination. My next tip is to make sure you have a very comfortable car seat. So this happened with my first daughter and the baby. They both really didn't like their car seats, especially my second daughter would cry every single time we put her in the car seat. And then we got her the Chico Next Fit and she loved it. She never cried. It's very pricey. It's $300, but honestly, the price was worth the piece. Do you know what I mean? It's so much better to pay a little bit or a lot but to have a smooth ride and where the baby's happy because honestly, who wants to sit on this hard piece of plastic? You know, the first car seat my daughter had was just like this really inexpensive, like $50 car seat and it had no padding and it was really uncomfortable. And after I realized that and I realized it would be torture <laughs> to put her through that for all these hours, you know, we decided we need to do this. We need to take the plunge and invest in what we think is the most comfortable car seat and is also really well rated for safety. My next tip is to keep all your essentials at hand. Pulling over for even 5, 10, 15 minutes, you know, every few hours is really going to add up and really delay your travels. So do yourself a favor and have everything you need right at hand. You know, whatever you think the baby's going to need. So any toys, any food if the baby's eating solids already or bottles of milk, um, the pacifier, the swaddle blanket, all those things and snacks for you as well. Make sure you pack plenty of healthy snacks for you so that you know once the baby's asleep, you have everything you need at hand so you're ready to eat and you're ready to relax as well. My next tip is to bring music and toys. When my daughters didn't wanna sleep and the baby was fussing, we put on some really soothing music. Classical music is great, instrumentals are great, and it really helped them, and especially the baby, just relax and fall asleep. Once we turned the music on, they were asleep within minutes. It was awesome. And the other thing that we did was bring some familiar objects. So we brought some toys that we knew our baby liked. And it's also good to have some new toys that will be novel and exciting and fun to play with. It'll keep your baby distracted when they're starting to get bored and fussy on the long car ride. 
My next tip is to bring a companion. So I was feeling ambitious and I wanted to drive out to DC the first leg of our trip by myself with our two daughters without my husband so that we can go ahead of him while he had to stay back to do work stuff and spend more time with family and friends, right? And my husband thankfully really discouraged me and he's like, this is, it's gonna be so hard, don't do it. And I didn't end up doing it and I realized that it would have been really, really, really hard, you know, stopping however often to go back to the back seat where the baby was and play with her, entertain her, or give her something that she needed. It would have taken probably twice as long if it would have been just me. And it would have just been a headache. It would have been really stressful. And I probably wouldn't have been able to keep my cool as well as I did having my husband there, him doing the driving, me entertaining the baby. And that just kept everybody more sane. My next tip is to swaddle the baby. I don't know about your baby, but my baby cannot sleep if she's not swaddled. And I know that everybody's different because my first daughter could not handle being swaddled. She just really didn't like it. And then this baby loves it. And I thought, you know, maybe I don't have to swaddle her. The movement of the car and the white noise will, you know, the natural white noise from the drive will just put her to sleep, right? Plus she has her binky, she's gonna be fine. And she's in this like lazy boy car seat and she would not fall asleep. The minute I swaddled her, she was out like a light. It was amazing. So if your baby likes to be swaddled, definitely swaddle them. I'll put a link down below for the swaddle we use that has an insert for the car seat straps so that they're really secured in their car seat and also really comfortable in that swaddle blanket. My next tip is to ride comfortably. Your baby's riding comfortably because they're in the super nice comfy car seat you got them, but it's also important for you to be comfortable because if you're not comfortable and you're not happy, your baby's probably not gonna be happy either. So some things that we did was we got a travel massage pillow and I'll put the link for that down below and that helps so much. It was a pillow that we plugged in to the lighter the lighter jack in the car. And whenever we would get tired or just our back started hurting, we would give ourselves a massage with this pillow. It was great. Another good tip is to get one of those neck pillows that helps, you know, when you're sleeping in an uncomfortable car. Hopefully your car isn't too uncomfortable. And another thing that you can do to be comfortable is also make sure, like I said, to have a lot of healthy snacks on hand so you're not having to pull over all the time to buy expensive junk food and so that you feel good and you're able to just take care of the baby and meet their needs. My last tip is to just be patient with your baby and yourself. You know, it's likely that there's gonna be some tears. Nobody really loves to sit in one spot for hours on end. And you're gonna get uncomfortable maybe a little bit. Your baby's probably gonna get uncomfortable. I know that it's difficult to remain calm and patient in a stressful situation, especially if there's a baby crying or a toddler fussing, but as long as you are safe and as long as you make it to your destination, everything's gonna be okay. Trust me when I say that it's so worth it. At the end of the day, the experiences that you have, the memories that you make, and the fun that you and your kids have together as a family is so worth it. So I really encourage you if you're thinking about going on a road trip versus you know taking a train or taking an airplane, try it and follow these tips. Let me know in the comments below, have you been on a long road trip before? Are you planning on going on one? I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to check out the mamasanablog.com. I'll leave a link down below to the post that goes with this video so you can get all the details of our trip and more information on how you can have the most successful road trip with a baby in tow. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.